Hello there, it's Michael here with another guitar lesson for Northern Ireland. I'm going to look at Thin Lizzy and Gary Moore's cover version of the song Emerald. So you need a green pick to continue, so if you don't have that, get one now. So check the timestamps below, it'll be quite a long video just to go to the relevant points for yourself. Now I'll talk about the tunings first, so Thin Lizzy's original version is an E flat tuning. So I'll put a link to a video if you don't know how to tune your guitar to E flat. But Gary Moore's version was in standard tuning, okay? And I'm just going to do the rest of this video in standard tuning to keep it simple. Okay, let's break that down. It's a C5 from the third fret of the A string. You're going to strum that chord and slide back to the B5. You don't have to strum it again once you land there. And then you'd be going to your open A5 power chord down there. So that's your first three hits. Then go down to G5 from your low E string. Back to C5. Then you do the same again almost, but the ending changes from C5 down to G5. So everything so far. So it keeps going and then there's just a little ending to the verse that I'll go through here. So I'll play the whole first verse. Main riff again, then your G5, and then play an E5 down here um, from the open low E string. Go up to fret 7 of the A string to play an E5, and you're going to hit two of those with a rest note in between, just like that. Then we've got to do, you can do a bunch of things here. You can palm mute the chord you're doing, palm mute the low E, or you could just put in some kind of in specific dead notes. Okay, whatever you want to make that percussive sound. So after your two hits, then you want to put in that kind of palm muting idea. And then you're back into the main riff again after that, okay? So two hits on your E5, some palm mutes, two hits, just one kind of palm mute before you're back into the main riff again. So there's sometimes a longer variation at the end of the verse where it's just more extended. So let me go over that for you. And on this last chord, hit it and then kind of slide off and then put a rest note in, okay, before we get into the chorus. Now let me talk about some details about these verses then. So in the Gary Moore version, it's a little bit more metal. That's why I personally like it a bit more, but they're both great versions, obviously. Now, for him doing the verse, you can hear in his version that we've got more kind of palm muting. It's a bit more of a thrashy or metallica way to play the riffs. So I'm going to just show you another interpretation how you could play those main verse riffs, okay? I'll give you some ideas here. <laughs> So it's quite fun to play that way. So you're kind of putting in extra palm mutes now instead of letting the notes ring for so much longer. So for example, when you get to this A note, instead of letting it ring out, fill it in with, these will be eighth note palm mutes. Mm -hmm. 
and throughout all that kind of playing you might be holding down a power chord shape but you're only muting the lowest note in it you're pedaling off it sometimes so if you want you can interpret your version of it that way Extremely epic and Irish sounding, very fun to play. Now I'll teach you the basic bare bones of it, but if you listen to like the live version of LinkedIn Below, um, the tribute to Phil Linet, you know, you can interpret this melody lots of different ways and you'll notice like the guitar players playing it kind of different from each other. And Thin Lizzy and Gary Moore's version has their differences obviously. But this is what the notes are, let's check it out. So you've got six notes on fret 7 of the D string. Just use a strict alternate picking here. Then another one, you'll do 7-5 on that D string. Then go to the A string, do 7-5-3. And I'm using 3rd finger, 1st finger, 1st finger. Then you've got five on the low E, so let's put all that together. And hopefully you're starting to hear it there. Next part. So a full bar there with um, six of these fret five, so play it six times. And then we want to play fret three of the low E string and give it a good old wiggle. Then stay there and play four of those threes. Then five and seven on the same string. And you could find these notes elsewhere, by the way, but this is the way I've learned it and I'm showing you. And I'm gonna go first finger, middle finger, little finger to do that. Next string, do four threes. Five, seven again. Back to the D string, you're going to play four of these, that's fret five of the D string. Come down to seven on the A string. Back up to fret five on the D string. Then our end of note, fret seven on the D string. With some vibrato. Next part, start at fret 5 of the G string and do 6 of those. And after the 6th one, you do another one to start the next bar. Then do 7 5 7 5 on the D string. Then let's keep going fret 7 on the A string. 5 7 5 3 Five, three, okay. And then this three on the low E again with some vibrato. Then I'll just play this in a bit slowly for you because we've done it before. And then back into a main riff. Then let me give you some extra details about how to interpret this chorus bit that we just looked at. So um, when you look at the live version, you can kind of hear like pull-offs as Gary Moore especially goes down the pattern. Um, but what, what you do notice as well, he's playing it with down strokes. So you could easily do it this way. Okay, that'll build up your stamina practicing it that way. So that's a fun way to do it. But um, what I think is cool is to throw in a few slides and pull-offs mainly. So let me show you. 
So that bit that we've already learned, you could put in a pull off here from the seven to five on the D string. Just there, and it's gonna help you kind of get the speed up a little bit. And when I get down to this group of uh, seven, five, three on the A string, why not just throw in a slide to back up from five to three? And it just adds a bit more of a fluid feel. Doesn't matter, you can play this any way you want, but um, I think that's cool. And you could even start throwing that stuff in the other parts of the riff, so there's an extra detail you can look at. Now something that I really like about the Gary Moore version is there's a harmony for the chorus over the top. Um, we're playing the same notes just in a higher octave and it actually it reminds me of the Megadeth guitarist Marty Friedman does this in a lot of his music. So this is how it sounds. So I'm not going to go through and call out every note. I'll play it slowly here with tabs on screen. So when the kind of cool bridge breakdown here, there's a few ways you could play the riff, but let me give you the gist of it. Okay, so what we need is some kind of A5. You could do this one from fret 5 of the low E. Or the open one. So do 9 down strokes on that chord, okay? Th this would be 9 eighth notes, so... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3. And I would count it like that. And uh, there's a lot of things going on in the live versions I've seen, but go to um, the middle two strings here, fret 5 of the D and G string. You're going to hit this double stop. And then hammer on the fret 7. I'm using first finger and hammering with third. And give it some vibrato as soon as you get to it. It's quite fast. Okay, so that's what you could do. Um, but there's ways to harmonize this and other details here. So let me give you those. That's a bit more of a Gary Moorish way to play it. So I'm using that A5. And I'm gonna do this hammer on idea, but I'm just doing single strings here, fret five to seven on the D string. Then do it again. And do that, but jump over to the G string. Very fun to play that. Gary Moore throws in a lot of like harmonies of that kind of thing on the uh, the tribute to Phil Lynott one. Um, let me show you a few other ideas you can do. Okay, so we can go way higher on the fretboard and get the same notes in a higher octave and you're just dealing with frets 17 and 19 then. In this case, both on the D and G string. And you can find those notes elsewhere if you want, but it works out nicely for muting the A string there. And let me show you how that bridge section ends. Just grab a E5 power chord from fret 7 of the A string and I'm doing a 3 string one. And 
And if you look at the tab there, I just had to be careful when I was transcribing this because there's like one bar of four four that just gets stuck in there before it goes back to three four, the original time signature, just to keep everything right. Now, the fret five and seven you see there is going to be part of the harmony solo really okay. So you can just add this to finish off this part. So that's finger one, fret five of the G, finger three, fret seven of the G. Okay, the harmony solo, which is gorgeous. I love how this sounds. It's got that cool minor thirds harmony that us guitar players really like a lot. So this is one of the guitars, and I'll break all the details down for this. Then I'll play the other one, and I'll not talk so much in it because you'll get the gist by then, okay? So this is the first guitar's harmony here. Beautiful. Okay, there's a lot of ways you can interpret this and again you could pick all the notes but it sounds and it looks like there are hammer-ons and kind of slidey bits involved with all this, especially um, the live version I keep talking about, okay. So 5-7 from the previous section, then here on the tab we've got 5 to start on the B string, then come back to the G string, fret 7, pick that note and pull off the 5. Then pick seven again, pull off the five and just, I like to just slide back to four. So everything so far. And I'm just using finger one and three for now. Then pick five and pull off the four. Grab seven on the D string. Same stuff again here, but we're going to change then to play this target note which is an A fret 8 of the B string and give it some vibrato. And I'm just going for that with my third finger, then let's keep going. So you would play 8 again after the vibrato note and then go to 5 on the high E. Go to 7 on that string, I'm using my first and second finger here. Pick 7 and pull off the 5. And then you're coming back to that A note again. Fret 8 of the B string. 5 on the high E. Then pick 8 and pull off the 6 on the B string. Again, I'm using 1st and 3rd finger. Pick 8 again. Pull off the 6 and slide back to 5. And you might see a pattern from the earlier parts. Pick 6, pull off the 5 on the B string again. 7 on the G. 5 on the B, 7, 5 on the G, with a pull off, and then this little bit again, 7 to 5 with a pull off. Slide to 4, and then our last note in that sequence really, you'll play 5 of the G string, and give it some vibrato. So from the new section after... That fret 8, okay, so. Okay, so do make sure you get the tab for this to really help you, okay? And I've got it on screen, obviously. Now, let me play the second guitar harmony, and these two are playing at the same time. So you can start to learn them both, especially if you want to do a cover version.
And as for the solos, I'd really have to do that another time in another video, okay? Um, in general, it's kind of A minor pentatonic, A minor stuff that you could do over the top of it. To give you an idea of the rhythm in the background, it's actually just doing like back and forth between two chords you could do. A G5 and an A5, okay? Um, so the A5 first. Okay, there's like three bars of that and then it'll go to four bars of G. Then back to like one group of A tagged on at the end. So in context. Or you could do it this way, fret five for the A5 on the low E. And it looks like Gary Moore is doing that one line and then doing like a G5 big open string chord. But he's holding it like with thumb and first finger like that. Feels a bit awkward for me to do it that way so I would hold it that way. Just whatever you want to do there. And then the outro is just the chorus riff we've already learned. So that's all the rhythm guitar parts and the main parts in the song. Now that's the full song for today. Now if you've made it this far in the video, I'm going to plug my cover version that I did for this. So it's on my personal channel and I'm going to link to that below. And you can check out how I've put a lot of this stuff into action and maybe do your own cover. 